In January 2021, I had my greatest investment ever, GameStop, which returned over 3,000%. But that investment lasted about 15 months, so the annualized returns is a little less than 3,000%. There is one investment which I made now, two and a half months ago, and which returned 276%. So the annualized returns means that $1 invested has returned me $500 in one year which is great, which means this is the greatest investment I ever made. Although it was only a small portion of my portfolio. And that investment is Zenoba Pharmaceuticals. I've got a lot of questions regarding this company. Many people have been asking me, how did I find this company? How did I know that maybe it was going to be acquired because I talk about possible acquisitions of Zenoba Pharmaceuticals. Or maybe I was just lucky, just like some people believe that I was lucky on GameStop. So today I want to talk about Zenoba Pharmaceuticals. And it's so important to talk about why I did not keep holding the company. Today it is a four bagger for me. I took profits. I'm happy with that. But there was the possibility that it was going to be an 11 bagger. So $1 returns $11. But I chose not to do that. Let's talk about my reasonings behind investing in Zenoba Pharmaceuticals first. Why did I invest in the company? What was I looking for? It was because of the balance sheet it had. The company, a pharmaceutical company, they have only one drug that they are making, Zygel. The drug has already been in existence for years and they have already gone through most of the clinical trials. They were trying to cure four diseases, but now they reduce it to only two. So, because it did not work for the other two, the company had already done most of the hard work. What was left now for us, the investors, were just to wait for the clinical trials and eventually FDA approval. Of course, we don't know how long this is going to take. It can take one year, two years, three years, or four years, because these things take a long time. So I was not worried about all of this. I was investing because of the balance sheet. The company had a slow cash burn and they had 45 million US dollars in net cash. So they had 45 million US dollars in cash and no debt at all. And the company was trading for only 17 million. So that was the main reason why I invested in Zenoba Pharmaceuticals. So what was I expecting that over the coming years, the cash was still going to be here. If they needed more cash, maybe they could sell more shares, which they have been doing and eventually Best case scenario, best case scenario, the drug gets approved and the company is eventually acquired because they are not going to produce it themselves. So that was the expectation I had, but they got acquired before the approval. This is something very common. These small companies are going to work on a drug that has very limited use, but is very important. And eventually the bigger companies would want to enter this game and acquire the small companies. And there is a logic here, which I also use with GameStop and I use with any other investment, when there is a company that is trading under its net cash value, when there is a company that is undervalued, you're not going to be the only person who will see it. Maybe you will be the first one, and it's great if you're the first one, but other people will see eventually that this company is undervalued, and these people will try to buy the company. This happened with GameStop when Ryan Cohen invested the company. Whatever I saw, he saw the same thing. Maybe he saw it later, but he saw the same thing. That's why he invested in GameStop. He saw that it was undervalued. And same thing here with Zenoba Pharmaceutical. Harmony Bioscience, they saw the value of Zenoba Pharmaceutical because they are paying today, let's say 60 million US dollars for Zenoba Pharmaceutical. They are getting 45 million US dollars in cash. That's a great acquisition they made. But of course, to be able to make such a great acquisition, you will need to give something else to the current owners of the company. Otherwise, they won't accept it because there are some conditions which, if met, the company may even get 200 million US dollars instead of just the 60 million US dollars we're getting today. So if all these conditions are met, the initial investment I made would have been an 11 backer. So how do we know if these conditions are met or not? The company is going to update us. The FDA is going to update us. But if you want to follow all of this, sometimes it can get hard. So I will advise you to use something that I use, it's called City Falcon. I use City Falcon every day. This is where I get all the news about all the companies I have in my portfolio in my watch list. I always tell you to be careful about the news. Most of it is not important, but if you want to filter what's important and what's not important, use City Falcon. And this is today's video sponsor. If you want 25% off your 
subscription to City Falcon. Any subscription, you can use the coupon code ISHFAC and you have your 25% off. I highly recommend it. This is something I use every day. So these conditions that the company has to meet in order for the buy price to go higher, they are approval from the FDA. There are conditions regarding clinical trials. They are ongoing. So if they are met a certain time, which I don't have in my head right now, so the buy price will go even higher. And there's also, in terms of revenues, but the company is not selling any product. So eventually, if they meet these conditions, the buy price will go higher. Today, without these conditions, the buy price should be $1.10. And you look at the stock price today, it is higher than $1.10. So the market expects that maybe some of these conditions may eventually take place. Not all of them, but some of them may take place. There is a low probability that some of them may take place because the stock price is higher than the initial buy price without any of these conditions met. If you want as an investor, maybe you can hold and expect that these conditions will be met eventually and you take a bigger profit. But why I didn't do that? It's because it is outside my circle of competence. I was investing in Zenova Pharmaceutical mostly because of the balance sheet. They had such a good balance sheet and the cash burn was so slow that I knew that they won't run out of money anytime soon. That's why I invested in Zenova Pharmaceutical. Yes, the product is important, but it was not that important how much cash flow they were going to generate in the future. It was for the balance sheet. But what are these conditions now? It's about how much cash they can generate in the future, how much uh, revenues they can generate how much uh, about FDA approval, about uh, clinical trials. All of this is outside my circle of competence. And for me, now I cannot invest in the company waiting it to be an 11 bagger. That would be being too greedy, not understanding what you're doing. I'm happy with the returns I made and I prefer to sell. So let's say, worst case scenario, they don't meet any of the conditions. Then I make less money. Now if they meet some of them, yes, maybe I will make extra money. But I don't want to take that extra risk because I don't know when the clinical trials will be done. I don't know these things. It's outside my circle of competence. If I knew these things very well, that Zenova Pharmaceutical would not have been 0.3% of my portfolio. Maybe it would have been 3% because I took a big risk with this investment. I knew that there were many things outside my circle of competence. Maybe that's not an investment Warren Buffett would recommend. It's more like an investment of Benjamin Graham when he looks at companies mostly at the balance sheet and ignores the rest of the business, what they do and what they don't do, it's not that important. And it also comes to arbitrage. Now this is an arbitrage, but the spread is uh, negative because it is trading higher than uh, initial buy price. So if you want to do arbitrage on this, you're going to lose money, except if maybe they meet the other conditions, but then you have to be an expert to be able to calculate the probability of these happenings. You have to follow all those clinical trials to know on which date they are going to get approval, which I don't have the time and I don't want to follow because it's not important for me. When I made the first investment, it was not important for me. They get approved in June 2025 or they get approved in June 2024. It doesn't matter for me. But if you want to make money now on the company, on the stuff, these things matter. It's always good to have a great investment. Sometimes you're going to get lucky. Maybe you can say that Harmony by a science came and invested the company and that I just got lucky. Yes, there is some element of luck, but if you make the right investments, eventually this is going to profit you. There's always an element of luck because you don't know what people will do, but there's also, you can also be unlucky. You make an investment, everything is good. And then we have a pandemic and you lose everything. Things like this do happen. What's important is that you're invested, you find great investments, and you buy the business. You buy real assets, you buy cash, or you buy future cash flow. This is what's important. This is what value investing, the value investing is about. And there is a company that I'm buying right now with such characteristics, it's Spectrum Brands. I would recommend you watch this video. Have a nice day and goodbye.